Hazape is back on, baby. It's in the third stimulus package at $1,500 if you worked as an essential worker during the pandemic. But what is an essential worker? In this throwback video, I explain what's an essential worker, how Hazard Pay works, and how Hazard Pay has changed over the last year from the Democrats. Enjoy this throwback video on Hazard Pay. Hazard pay heats up, but could your key to hazard pay rest in the supermarkets? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Afternoon's LLA. I hope you're good and safe. This is our two-hour programming block that starts every day at 3.30 with a check, then goes to hazard pay, then FPUC, and finally rent assistance. Um, I mean, this is a couple of few days here that we're really trying to hammer standalone bills. Standalone bills, as Mark Meadows and Steve Mnuchin said, they're willing and agreeing to do standalone bills, but haven't written them. And Nancy and Chuck are literally at wit's end and doing nothing. So millions of Americans, viewers of this channel, and countless others have really stepped up and said, hey, get the checks written, get the bills written. Enough is enough. Now, hazard pay is not lost in that discussion, but where and when would the push for hazard pay occur? I'm going to get to that right now. There really is a key to how to get the hazard pay discussion pushed. And a lot of people have wondered where that push is. Obviously, I'm the channel that has really covered this every single day for, what, two months, three months, while broadcasters have literally not even covered the subject matter. Um, others have just simply forgotten about it. And it's just nowhere to be seen. And it's so much money. And it's so important, it's to ensure that you are compensated for your work during the pandemic as essential workers, and to ensure that you're paid going forward, and to also ensure that your workplace is safe. And what have we heard in return? Really nothing. So what's important for you to understand as you watch this video is what I'm gonna give you advice about as follows. I've generally talked about two groups that are critical for you getting hazard pay. One, your fellow workers, which I'll touch on that again in a second. But the second one, this is really the focus of this channel, is unions, and especially the grocery store unions. Let me get right to the details. Hazard pay is really a push. It's a push both to get it legislatively approved, and then once approved, it's a push to ensure that your employer applies for you. If you just knew this channel, um, hazard pay is not something you can apply for. You have to have your employer apply for it. So how do they do it, and how would they do it? And how do you ensure that they actually do it, and how do you make sure they do it quickly enough? Over the weekend, I detailed one company who applied for hazard pay on a state level in one state where the program was opened and I actually reported on the day that it opened. And then um, over the weekend, I reported when it was closed. And guess what happened? One um, medical franchise or f medical business that had a lot of locations, 700 employees or something, came up and came in and e ate up a huge chunk of the entire allocation. It was $40 million allocated by a state for hazard pay. And that one business grabbed eight million dollars of the 40 million dollars <laughs> if you don't think that would happen on a federal level think again there's going to be businesses out there that have hundreds if not thousands of employees that'll go in and just really go like the jaws of life just sort of grab the hazard pay while you may be sitting wandering around wandering around for your boss unable to decide and slowly it disappears First, hazard pay is not intended to be an endless sum of money. It's going to be an allocated amount of money, and when it's gone, it's gone. It's going to be like PPP the first time. It's there, and then it's gone. Or EIDL, it's there, and it's gone. So you need to move quickly. But moving quickly may not be enough, and that's what this video is about. You need to ensure that this entire microcosm, this entire industry in which you work, gets the money. And how do you ensure that? One of the most inherent abilities to do it is the unions that represent your industry. Almost all industries have unions. Your business may not be unionized. Your company may not be unionized. Your city may not be unionized. But you can certainly reach out to your representatives who work in that, uh, in that industry. Here's an example. 
you work at the local liquor store that's owned by Chuck, not Schumer, but Chuck. And you know, there's just three of you there. It's owned by the same guy, you know, who's owned it for 50 years. Um, he's not really excited about applying for hazard pay, but you know, you run the entire store. You've done the calculations. You know, you're going to get $10,000. You know, it's, you know, $13 an hour. You know, you've done the calculation, how many hours you work since the pandemic started in January up to the present. And you're like, Hey, I've watched the purple wonder. I know how many hours that is. And you're like, okay, that's $10,000. But the boss like, I, you know, uh, what happens happens or something ridiculous he says to you you're like no I want that money that money is mine you need to go give me my money he, unfortunately I don't think that his situation is going to be unique I think it's going to be absolutely the commonplace I think the vast majority of employers are not going to do anything and they're going to there's going to be a rip and tie between employees and employees so what do you do I really think that at that point, that employee should have reached out to unions in the area. He may work just across the street from uh, a unionized supermarket. And that unionized supermarket may have employees in that supermarket who are part of a union that has, you know, 10,000 union employees, 5,000 union employees. Guess what they're doing with that supermarket chain? Oh, they've clearly made a very good case to them that you better apply for hazard pay if it becomes law or we're walking out. Imagine an employee that has all their unionized employees work walk out. Now, it's a little bit more different than you for you than them. When they walk out in a unionized workplace, they the employer, the market can't then go hire non-union employees very easily. That's called, you know, there's unfair labor practices about that where you replace unionized workers with non-unionized in a, in, a, in a laborized environment, in a, in a unionized work environment. It's just not that simple. Um, now, your boss could certainly fire you and hire someone else because you're not unionized. So it's it, situations like that, you, you really need to reach out to the unions that are in your area. So if you're a truck driver and you're not unionized, but there are unionized truck drivers you know that are in your area, you need to be reaching out to them. If you are, um, you know, in any of the essential worker jobs, let's say, um, you know, uh, maintenance people, and there are unionized maintenance people, but you're not, you need to reach out to them. And ultimately, that is the type of leverage that could help you ensure that you get hazard pay. Now, how about the individuals um, who just don't see that as a possible outcome? They don't see that as a passable path. Well, the next item of business would be your fellow workers. There's nothing of better leverage than ensuring that all the workers at the workplace get the benefits that they need. And so what you need to have is conversations with your fellow workers outside the con outside the the, the, the place of the boss being near you. And you'd have conversations about hazard pay. Are we going to, what are we going to do about hazard pay? You know, I spoke to Chuck, the boss, and he doesn't want to go get us hazard pay. And you, 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 all five of us, we all qualify for how many hazard pay. How many hours do you work? How many hours did you work? How many hours did you work? And then you do, and you're like, wait a second, you know, this is all this money. Why is he not doing it? You need to figure out a plan of action. Now, my job is not to give plan of actions, a call of actions for everyone, but my job is to give you the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is employers are not going to apply for you. And you can't just sit back and say, oh, why didn't you apply for me? You need to now sitting in August, prepare for how to deal with the situation if it becomes law and the employer does not apply for you. And simply just assuming there's going to be, you know, uh, a boss that does it for you is just a little bit too much of a presumption. The reason why I say this is that ultimately, you know, <laughs> on videos that are like 17 uh, minutes in length and the average viewership of the, of the viewers, let's say 12 or 13 minutes, they, so it means they, on average they watch about 14 minutes of a 17 minutes video, then you're clearly hearing me say, you don't get hazard pay until it passes as law and the employer applies for you, not you. I repeat that literally almost every single day. But I have countless, countless, I just don't mean a few, I have countless people reach out to me and say, hey, how do I get that $10,000? How do I get that $10,000? I want to, where's the online application for me to get hazard pay? 
It makes me worried that either viewers <laughs> had the 14 minutes running and weren't listening, or simply think that there's a way around it. And I think it's really the, the, the later situation. There's no way around it. The way the hazard pay bill is written is the way it's written. And so if it's passed by the powers of be, then there you go. Now, as you sit back and you wonder, okay, who's going to push for the legislation to get passed, which is a whole other subject. And, you know, I could have done a whole video on that today as well. I mean, maybe tomorrow. Who's going to get this legislation passed? Now, I got to tell you, the movement at the moment is standalone bills for things that are absolutely urgent at the very minute. That's standalone stimulus checks, standalone FPUC, and standalone um, eviction moratorium. By the way, FPUC, if you're on unemployment benefits at any time, because you're at essential a workplace and now you've been laid off, doesn't mean you don't get hazard pay. So I want you to make sure that you understand that. Hazard pay does not conflict, conflict with anything. It doesn't conflict with stimulus checks. It doesn't conflict with unemployment benefits. It's just an add-on. So make sure you understand that. But who's going to push for hazard pay? Because really, it's 99.99% probability that hazard pay would never get a standalone bill. It's not an urgent situation. It's for something that happened in the past, generally. Yes, the urgency about it is the workplace safetyness, but with this group of people, they just don't see that as urgent. I do, but they don't. So they have never qualified hazard pay as an urgent thing to be done right now. That's not to say it's not going to get approved, but I don't think it's going to get a standalone bill. And so not as a standalone bill, it's in that enormous stimulus check package. And so who's likely to really get it pushed through? Again, we're back to the same thing. Unions. You need to spend your time and effort, and if you want to really get that hazard pay approved, is focus on contacting unions and say, hey, we got to get this hazard pay approved. Hey, we got to get this hazard pay approved. Tag the unions in your um, genre, whether you're grocery or ride share or um, trucking or shipping and handling or food distribution or farming, tag the unions because you need to get these things done. If no one works as a team to get hazard pay approved, you know what's going to happen. I mean, you got, you got Nancy and Chuck that are focused on Gavin and, and Andrew getting uh, bailouts of Andrew State and getting bailouts of Gavin State, New York and California. Do they have hazard pay as a priority? I don't think so. I mean, I've never heard them say hi. I really, really care for hazard pay. I, uh, you know, I don't hear, I don't hear that. Nancy has that same script every day. The children going hungry, get the children going hungry, the children going hungry. Okay, so has she ever said anything about hazard pay? I mean, she could change the script. You know, I know it's hard to memorize lines, but you could change the script. No, she's always repeating the same script. So without that focus on hazard pay, who needs to do the focus for you? You, the unions, and your coworkers. Coming up next is FPUC, big developments on FPUC. I debut really what should be in a standalone bill for an extension of FPU benefits. Uh, go to the front of the channel. We reached 200,000 subscribers last week. Thank you so much. Incredible blessing. No one in the history of YouTube has ever done that. Um, 111 days or 118 days, approximately three and a quarter months. So just incredible run. We had said last Saturday we want to add 25,000 new subscribers in two weeks as of last Saturday. And we've now added 11,000. So hey, we're doing good. Let's, let's keep it up. So go to the front of the channel, like and subscribe. Subscribe and hit the alert button. And please hit the, the like button. Um, yeah, there's some trolls out there. <laughs> the video goes live and bam, two negatives. It's like, wait a second, the video's only been live for like 11 seconds. And sure enough, that's the only two negatives the video ever gets. But it's like, okay, I see you, troll. Um, so every positive you can hit where there's a click button, that really helps as well. Coming up next on afternoon LA, Afternoons LA Light is FPUC. As always, stay informed, stay motivated, stay smiling, stay focused, and stay available for more.